No, certainly not. The market has delivered significant value over the years, even in this price crisis situation that we are going through. Uh, the market is delivered and efficient in uh, efficient dispatching signals, efficient signals to use lots of resources, and the current short-term market based on marginal pricing will be even more critical in a future with more renewables, with more storage, with more demand-side response, where lots of distributed resources will have to react to the price signals. But the, the crisis has also shown that there are things that could be improved and we have to improve the framework to deliver the enormous amount of investments that we need. We have to improve the range of choices available to our customers to cover their energy needs and to hedge their risks. Well, first, the key principles of the study are to build on the existing market and to add three things. First thing, there needs to be a better hedging framework, engagement framework for consumers. Second thing, we need a framework to support investment, the massive investments needed, both on the production side, on the consumer side, on the infrastructure side for the energy transition. And thirdly, we need to anticipate the evolution of our system. That means that the system needs uh, to secure the operation of the system needs to be anticipated um, much better. So what is behind this idea of enhancing customer engagement and hedging opportunities for consumers? Well, it's about a number of things, but first and foremost, it's about better transparency, better information for consumers on the risks that they are exposed to. It's also about better opportunities for forward hedging by removing some of the barriers that may exist to longer term contracting in some, in some countries. It's also about a resilience framework for suppliers to make sure that they are able to withstand crisis and finally, and that's very important, it's also about making sure that all of this does not interfere with the right incentive and signals for consumers to react in the short term and be actively engaged in power markets. Well, we will have to combine private contracts, PPAs, public environments, CFDs, to build and contract more renewable capacity, more forward contracting. Sometimes these elements are seen as competitors, but we believe that if, if properly designed, they can work well together, they can create a virtuous circle, they can reinforce each other and offer a more liquid market, more choices for consumers and investors alike, and a better environment for the energy transition. So what do we mean by having a better system needs framework? Well, fundamentally, the system of tomorrow will be more complex to run with more variable generation and a need for substantial investment in flexibility as well as in infrastructure. So we need a framework to coordinate and disseminate information. We currently have a number of planning processes for networks or for adequacy. But what we recommend in the study is to make them holistic, so to have a full system framework that looks across sectors, that looks across the end uses of electricity, and that improves both the methodologies we have as well as the governance of doing these forward-looking assessments. Many things can be done with the existing legal framework, but we still believe that there are things that could be improved in legislation. In some cases, we need new legislation, for instance, a new regulation on collaterals, because the requirements of collaterals are a major obstacle for the participation in forward markets right now. We also need legislation to mandate member states to remove obstacles, for instance, to remove obstacles to PPAs or to remove obstacles to long-term contracting by small consumers, etc. We also need some kind of guidelines to 
export or to share best practice. For instance, in the design of CFDs, there are lots of complicated details and sharing those best practices among the different member states will be very useful.